Hey guys, what is up? Thank you so much for tuning in to the very first episode of For the Girls podcast. Yes. Brought to you by Relationship Restored. We're going to do a quick intro because since it is our first episode, y'all don't know who we are. So, Cece, let's start with you first. Kind of do a quick intro. Tell the people who you is. Yeah, so hey guys, my name is Cece Costin. I'm originally from the DMV area. I'm 31 years old. I'm recently married to my fine ass husband Dr. <laughs> Shane Costin. If you guys, shameless plug, if you guys need a root canal, he <laughs> is the number one endodontist in DC. Okay. Oh, he's number one. Yes. Okay. Number one, honey. Uh, and yeah. black. And black. Okay. Yes. Howard. Uh, hello, oh, yeah. Howard grad. Um, and then, yeah, we have a beautiful baby girl, Capri Isabella. She'll be one soon. So, yeah, that's me. That's my guy, baby, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll go next. Uh, I'm Brianna Ponte. I am 20, ooh, we're going to say 25. I'm, I'm, I'm 29. <laughs> 29 <laughs> years old. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, but I live in the DMV now. Love it. That's how I met these beautiful ladies beside me. Um, I am in branding, social media, mindset coaching. Um, obviously, Dre, the founder and owner of Relationship Resort, is my hubby. Um, hey, Dre. Shout out, Dre. <laughs> and really, uh, I'm just here to continue to do what me and Dre started in the first place, which is just talking about relationships and making sure that all you beautiful women out there get the men that you love and deserve because, yes. honey. They're out there, y'all. Love is hard, but when you find it, it's worth it. So yes. that's me. Go ahead, Angela. All right. All right. Hey, y'all. I'm Angela Hanna. I'm from Hampton, Virginia, Tidewater area. Um, I moved up to the DMV, what, 12 years ago to teach. i a public school teacher in D.C., and that's where I met my husband, Mr. Rashawn Hanna. And he is also fine as hell. Shameless plug. He, he <laughs> is a good looking brother. Oh, yeah. That's for sure. Yes. I mean, can't keep my hands off him. <laughs> <laughs> He's both. <laughs> yes. Um, and that's how I met him. We were super into working out together, except he continued to work out. <laughs> it slowed down for you a little it bit. It slowed down for me a little bit. Um, that's where I met my husband. When I met him, he had a one-year-old son. So, you know, we'll talk more about that. It was very interesting for me. But, you know, I love my bonus son to death. Can't imagine life without him. And then we have our daughter together, Alina. Lee. So that's our baby. Yes. She is so cute. You guys are speaking of fear. <laughs> the sass. And before we jump into the episode, I think it's really important to point this out too, just so our listeners know. All three of us are married, but we have totally different journeys to getting married. So for me, me and Dre waited for marriage. It was a long wait um, with Angela. You know, she did not want to be with someone who already had kids. And obviously her husband does have children. That's exactly what I they, ended up with. Yeah. So <laughs> that's a different type of, you know, route you have to take dealing with baby mamas and stuff like that. Yes. At the beginning could be yeah. tough. So yes. I'm sure some of y'all can relate to Angela. And then with Cece, they had the plan of, you know, get engaged, get married, then have kids. But baby Capri she came, came first. Her birthday There's trip. some good beverages yeah okay. and fun fact <laughs> her baby shower was also her engagement yeah so they yeah. got pregnant got engaged had the baby then got married so yeah. i'm sure that you guys listening can relate to one of our stories um which is just really cool because we have all yeah. different dynamics so today we're talking about healing from your past relationships. The reason why we wanted to start this episode um, or the, the show off with this episode is because before we talk about love and relationships, we have to talk about self and healing is one of the biggest, biggest things that has to happen mm -hmm. or that you at least have to be aware of because trauma is real. So Super. let's kick it <clears throat> off talking about specifically how to first identify your traumas because that's really where the healing begins it's like you know denial step one right you gotta get past past the denial, denial. Yeah. yeah yeah i mean if you're gonna get to marriage like marriage is a relationship so mm -hmm. you have to go through all these relationships for practice almost mm -hmm. um and i just think if you're gonna have a marriage that's successful, you have to, you have to have to look at what was wrong in all the other relationships. Yeah. What was wrong? 
And was it you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, you. Uh, I mean, was it you? There, there's definitely a high percentage that you, you know, had a lot to do with, you know, why you write in a certain way. Like, you know, not, you have to take accountability for for wanting to identify your traumas and work through that, right? Yeah. But I think, like, for me, it was like kind of like hard to really pinpoint what my traumas were. So I think what helped me to to you know, kind of understand that was meditation. Mm -hmm. So for me, I, <laughs> I used to be in the streets and I used to like it. <laughs> ah, she was for the streets. <laughs> she was for the streets. Yeah, right. Pew, pew. So, so like I would like suppress like any traumas I have with substances or my environment, meeting new people, meeting new men, meeting new friends, like all the above, okay? It's like so, a high. Oh, 100% it was a high. It's a high. And especially like when you have access to, to a lot of things, mm -hmm. like it's just, it's intensified, yes. right? So for me, I had to like be like, okay, I, I had to get to a point that I wanted to leave all that behind. Yeah. Because I, I think if you're not ready to leave that, that behind, you're not gonna actually do the work required in order to leave all that behind and, and identify like your traumas. Yeah. So that's like number one. And then like for me, how I really took that a level deeper was through meditation because I had to quiet my mind and actually like do some self-reflection and then just be very intentional with my internal thoughts. Side note, meditation is so hard. It's very hard. It is. It's so it's hard. hard. It's How very do you hard. just like push out you know everything uh, out your brain guided meditation helps me okay. a lot okay because um, I can't I I suck at yeah meditation. And, then, and then also like I have a squirrel brain like for real like I, I like I'm yeah. like okay I'm gonna meditate and like five <laughs> seconds later I'm like ooh, but did I do this exactly and it's like wait hold on squirrel so like um having a, a mantra that like that that also helps mm -hmm. but guided meditation because they know that you have a squirrel brain all humans are just they're squirrels we're like Ooh. nuts 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 diamonds yeah. um <laughs> so so it's like you know guided meditation like it brings you back to that space to like kind of like do that reflection and like kind of like be one with your thoughts and like mm -hmm. Um, so I think that happened and like through meditation, I really like figured out like, why am I acting a, a certain way? Why do I allow, uh, men to have access to me a certain way? And, you know, a lot of it stems from trauma from my upbringing, like seeing my dad, um, being unfaithful with my mom. And then me as a, as a teenager and like, young adult, like being in the mix of it. Cause my mm. mom would come to me to like vent mm -hmm. and so like I was very much in the mix of it and then I I remember like when you know my dad would introduce me to a friend and then you know like she said to someone else like oh my boyfriend and I'm like mm. your boyfriend like well right. my daddy's still married to my mama so how's that working mm -hmm. so and you were so young um, internalizing yeah that. yeah so it's really crazy. really important that you brought that up because the first thing that I was going to bring up is that dealing with like past relationships is not just romantic it's not just your boyfriends no. it's really like your relationship with your dad your relationship with your mom or the lack there Girl, oh, daddy issues is a real totally thing uh, and that's shapes. that's most of women yeah like why they struggle in relationships intimate relationships with men mm. a lot of it truly stems from father issues yeah. yeah yeah so if we're saying you know first everybody has trauma everybody has everybody past things that have affected them even if they don't look at it as trauma you are who you are and how you are because of your past relationships. So I think the first step is like creating a list, like really sitting down and looking at, okay, from a family perspective, who are people who have shaped who I am today in the good and the bad ways and knowing both, because sometimes you don't understand that something is affecting you in a negative way until you really make a list of all the things that affect you in a positive way, because then you start to realize, oh, this happened. And because of that, then this happened. Um, but then looking at definitely relationships and looking at your past exes and even if they weren't your boyfriend, just, you know, some guy that you was dating. Situationships. For a few weeks. Girl, situationships was my life. Yeah, my, make that list. my now husband was my really my true first like serious adult relationship. Yeah. Like anything before yeah. that, honey, we were having fun. And then when and then whenever the fun was done, I moved on to a new fun. Yeah. And, and, and like, that's how I like to live my life. And like, yeah. that was okay for where I was in that moment. Yeah. You know? Right. And 
since you bring that up, um, me and Brie are kind of similar on this, like getting into the relationship with my husband. I had one long relationship and that ended and I met my husband a year later and I realized I didn't have a lot of relationship mm-hmm. like experience at all. And um, thankfully, my husband was super patient <laughs> with mm-hmm. some things, but just adult tantrums. You know, that's a, that was a big one I used to do. Yeah. Adult tantrums. Girl, I was a runner. Girl, silent <laughs> treatment. Yeah, silent same, treatment. Girl, I you would not away. know that a silent <laughs> treatment is a like straight. Like, you know what? I'm leaving. <laughs> I don't want to deal with this. Shane had to be like, where you go? You ain't going nowhere. We're going to talk about this. And I was like, no, I don't right. want to. But the thing is, I had did that so many times yeah. in my past relationship. And I didn't, I just, and I say this to him a lot. I feel like I didn't have a lot of experience coming into this relation, into my marriage mm-hmm. and dealing with those tough moments, you know, being comfortable with uncomfortable conversations and <laughs> uncomfortable conversations and uncomfortable moments. Because in those few relationships I had, you just ran away from them. Yeah. So how do you heal when you don't have a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. So that's like another side to it. Like a lot of women have so much experience, years and years, tons of situationships. And, you know, then there's the women who might have had four or five relationships. You know, I do feel like, though, if you had less experiences, but experiences that lasted longer, that you can learn more from that. Because I agree. If That's you have 30 people that you've been intimate with or had flings with, you're not really learning in not those at relationships. All. You're, just you're not learning doing. yourself. Yeah. So I feel like even yeah, though you're looking true. at it as like, you know, from a quantity standpoint, it's lower. Yeah. I think yeah. you probably learned a lot. A lot from more. Than, yeah. Especially than, than I did. Yourself. Yeah. Because I would say like when Shane and I got together, like it was. I mean, it was a tremendous learning experience for me. But what also helped is that like six months into us just being boyfriend and girlfriend, we went to couples counseling. Mm-hmm. And like that gave me like the tools to also because we were very intentional. Like we know why we're here. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're we're grown. We grown mm-hmm. grown. And mm-hmm. so we know like, you know what? I like you. I like you too. Like, let's try to like do this for like the long term. So if we're going to do it for the long term. You got some issues. I got some issues. So let's go try to get these issues squared away together yeah. early. Yeah. Be proactive. Learn some tools. Have them in our toolbox so that when a time comes that I try to run away from conflict, you're like, uh, 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 come back here, girl. Yeah. We're going to talk this through. Yeah. yeah. Like, and then, okay. So that, we're talking about that. Now, I know you. Have you all been cheated on? Mm. Uh, I've mm-hmm. never been in a relationship to be cheated on. So, <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, no, situationships. No, 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 girl. Like anytime, like any anytime I was really feeling myself or I was like in a serious situationship and like he started acting up, honey, I went and started went, acting up myself. Said, like yeah. I it was it was a defense mechanism that I had oh. put up of like, oh well, I'm not gonna let anyone get too close. Like if he's doing his thing, well, I'm gonna keep doing my thing. Mm-hmm, like yeah. I took on a very masculine Goes back to that dad. I mean, totally. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. A masculine persona. So I bring up the cheating part because I wanted to know how that affected that or did it give you some triggers going into marriage? Yeah. And that for me, this is terrible to say, but it's honest. Um, I just went into relationships assuming I would be cheated on. Me too. What? Because, me too. Yeah. Because and I you guys too. accepted that? Yeah. No, not Girl. accepted it. But it's, I just, when you look around, I saw married people cheating. I saw, you know, fresh new honeymoon and love people cheating. Your I, friends getting I cheated on. Up Everybody is getting a, cheated on. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, this, this, this is normal. This is true. Everyone is getting cheated on, but I'm now, I didn't go into it saying, like, I'm going to get cheated on and yeah. be like, hey, thanks. I knew it was going to happen. So, like, let's just pretend it didn't. Yeah. No, but, I mean, a lot it of the times we like got that. cheated yeah. on, you just, like, kind of forgave them, right? Or or you, like, forgave not them. forgave them, Let but. Let me tell you right now. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now. If I get cheated on, I don't know how how uh, forgiving, forgiving I'm going right. to be. Now that I'm in this space <laughs> now, after you've healed, and that's where I was getting to, now now that I've healed from that yeah. and I know, hey, like, this is not something I have to deal with. Mm-hmm. Like, I just thought that was just the norm younger. Like, I, I, he cheats on you. He says sorry. He does everything to win you back and you take him back. See, I think the reason why I feel so strongly about, like, if if I get cheated on, 
like it's going to be hard for me to forgive is because I feel like my mom was too forgiving to my to my father and I wish that she would have there was times that I wish that she would have left and so like for me I I, the reason why I am the way I am is very calculated like I wanted to be very independent I wanted to have my own money I wanted to make sure I always had my own thing going on so that if for whatever but whatever happens, I'm able to pick up my life and, ooh, and still have yeah. the same quality of life because my quality of life is very important to me. I like nice things and I want to be able to provide those for myself. Now, that doesn't mean that I'd like to provide them for myself. If someone else provides it for me, I am very, very <laughs> receiving. <laughs> receiving of that. Dr. Costin. <laughs> Dr. Costin. <laughs> But I can do that for myself as well. Yes. So, yes. um, so I think that that's why I I have a very low tolerance for cheating. Yeah. yeah. But what you just said is so perfect. It's that at the end, of, you were traumatized as a young teenager yeah. seeing your mom being in a position where she didn't have that type of freedom. So yeah, you no, already she had the defense she mechanism. That's, she did not. Like yeah. She she really made in strategic decisions based off of like what she felt like she had to do at the time and for her kids. And so that's why she stayed. Yeah. So the key is identifying first, identifying, then looking at, and this is how I always identified my trauma or like, what was my, what do I need to heal from? I would just look at the things that I was doing repetitively that was not giving me positive results. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, those are problems. So I would write these things down. Like, you know, when it comes to dating guys before I met my husband and before I got intentional with like, what am I looking for? I looked at all the things that I knew I did not want. And then when I looked at what I did not want, I looked at why I was receiving or attracting those things and then that's how I identify the daddy mm. issue thing mm. then once you identify the issue then you figure out what do I do to change this yeah. and mm. I think for you understanding that you know your your father is not is not your husband you know like yeah. or yeah. when it comes to you and, and the cheating situation like those men that dated you and cheated on you is not your husband yeah. and that we don't have to accept that but how do you know the red flags that let you know Can triggers I, that's what I say Can what I, are yeah. the triggers yeah I, I will say and also for um, when we're talking about cheating in a relationship, there's a lot of things that ha- that happen before cheating becomes the solution, mm-hmm. right? So I think that couples often also have to take ownership of making sure that the other person's needs are being fulfilled um, in your relationship, right? So like, for instance, like, I think that sometimes a lot of men may cheat on their wives because their wives stopped doing something Mm -hmm. that they were doing initially like right like so a lot this happens a lot with moms right so when women become mothers naturally we just we just take on that motherly role and just we we emerge ourselves in it so so deep that sometimes our husband becomes secondary Mm -hmm. the kid becomes the priority which is understandable like that's our baby like i i made that okay and i pushed it or it got pulled out of me Mm -hmm. Um, and they want you that's all they want is mommy yeah all they want is mommy and so um but but you're so when your husband's needs may not be getting met because now he's not uh the first priority anymore um, he needs to be able to communicate uh, that yeah. with you. And you have to be able to receive that yeah. and then be like, OK, you know what? My husband's not feeling heard. He's not feeling seen. I need to kind of step it up a little bit as a wife and figure out some type of balance between giving my beautiful baby everything that he or she deserves, but also giving my husband that as well. And and I also believe that um, the priority levels should be husband then child oh 100 percent agree because your husband's always gonna be there your kids are gonna leave you eventually we always say me and my husband always say when we get into our arguments and we disagree we try to come back down if we're not good the family's not good Mm -hmm. like if we're not good it falls apart not just with our kids in-laws friends yeah money everything is not good yes Mm -hmm. like y'all aren't good no one no, else, nothing is good. else is good. And I think a lot of times mothers do, like, especially as a new mother. Oh, yeah. You definitely, you don't know how to balance it. Well, but also n- new mothers but n- I think, need I think grace just, because, because that, that's. Yes. I was about to side note that, like, it should never be because you were being a mother. That's that. That's why you got never. it. Yes. Never. It should never be. It's your fault. You got. And I really hope women start doing that. It's. 
it's not my fault I got cheated on. Yeah. Like, no, I didn't no, do this. No, no, no. But no, I get what you're coming from with the communicate. It could be prevented long, long ago, before if there is effective that's communication. That's all I'm saying. It but could, also, do you know how many guys cheat just, just because? No like, I, I agree they with that too. They go into the <laughs> relationship <laughs> knowing that they're going to cheat. Yes. Yes. So yes. they already know. Yes. They can't control themselves. Yes. Some, but also, you have to know who you're having a baby with, exactly. who you're about to marry. I like, was getting to like, that next point. If your man ain't shit, you know, like while you're dating him and while you're engaged to him, he ain't, he's going to be an ancient shit, husband. Yeah. Like, yeah. like it's going to continue. It's like, going to continue. So one thing for me, when I first got like cheated on or when it happened, cause like I said, I kind of knew it could possibly happen is I felt I had a bunch of insecurities in terms of like, why? Like, was it this? Was it that? Do I not do this good enough? Did I not, you know, do X, Y, and Z? Like, yeah. is she cuter than me? Like, yeah. is she, does she have better conversations? So I think what cheating brings out in women is all those insecurities, things that probably weren't insecurities in the first place, yeah. Yeah. but you start to really like, yeah. you know, reflect and look at yourself and are thinking of all the possible things that is the reason why this man cheated. When at the end of the day, there's no reason it has nothing to do with you. It has you. nothing yeah. to do that with you. If someone is choosing you, they're not going to cheat on you. Exactly. Someone that would cheat on you is not someone that really loves you or understands what a committed relationship is. So I think sometimes girls are stuck in these situations where they think of the time that they've put into this yes. person. They oh. think like, well, you know, I, I'd rather just you know forgive him and like we build on what we already have then to start over with someone new and it's yeah. like stop making like, excuses yeah. for people yeah and also to. don't mm-hmm. look it's at not, you're the problem yes. it's just not the right person yeah yes. move on you know but speaking of like you're the problem unrelated but kind of related so in relationships when you might be the one causing the problem. How do you admit your fault? Mm. <laughs> and can Look we say sometimes women, <laughs> it, it especially ooh, strong, independent yeah. women, I can admit now on this pa- podcast, on whatever we are on <laughs> at this moment, I have always struggled admitting fault. Girl, me it too. just it's I and an I get defeated offensive and it's just something we have I have been working on Mm -hmm. and the thing is I didn't know it I did not know it until my husband pointed it out and the thing that's (laughs) your friends won't point it out because but I never really got into those arguments with my friends because when you are like with a man and it's a different type of vulnerability well I mean if you're let's say you and your you and your boyfriend at the time are going oh, yeah. through uh-huh. something if mm-hmm. you talk to your friends your friends usually do not tell you like oh girl you wrong or yes. I don't think you're uh, understanding from yes. his perspective most it's friends don't like, but they some hype friends you. will they hype you <laughs> and they be like girl he did what oh yeah I mean you this know? this and, this is true right. yeah your, your right. girlfriends so do, do hype you tough. unless like it's like your real real girlfriend be like girl you know okay girl I'm let me help you I hear you and like I get where you're coming from but also i'm gonna play devil's advocate like you <laughs> and did that bum, doesn't bum, bum. normally happen until you're older <laughs> oh yeah so yes. like, yes. I, I know yes. I agree. early 20s. college yes. yes people aren't holding you accountable like yeah. that no, no for sure you be walking around no. thinking stuff don't stick yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. wow yes. you out here but i think it all comes from one it comes from having a relationship with god i feel like if you are checking in with yourself if you are making sure that you are the best person you can be the best version of you if you are holding yourself to a standard um then that is a way to determine when you are at fault because yeah. if you are really really doing that that work on yourself it's easier to it's admit that word cc used intentional yes you got to be intentional with your husband your boyfriend whatever relationship you're in your friends whatever your family but you also have to be intentional with yourself mm-hmm. yes like you got yes you and your husband is number one but you and you is you literally, literally like probably girl, over over that yeah over that but, god but, but that, should be, you know, that should always be a private yes your, your number one priority yeah. yes yeah. intentional yeah. with yourself and like checking those those moments just yeah, like girl, you, you just have to said. learn how to check yourself yes like Ooh, I yes. don't want to admit that I'm wrong and because it's so I'm always right to... and I have such a high ego and I'm cute and I don't have to do that. Right. I'm, going I'm spoiled. To. <laughs> but it is so hard to say sorry to. It is, it is. But it's it is. so necessary. I, I think for me in my relationship, um, my husband um, promotes an environment that allows me to be vulnerable to admit mm. that I'm wrong. Like he doesn't like throw it in my face of like, see, I told you, I told mm. you so. Like he allows me to like, like when I come to him, I'm like, 
I'm sorry. Like, I didn't mean to act like that. I was just hangry. Like, he's like, <laughs> it's okay. Come here. I forgive you. I know. You know, so like, I think that you have to like, when you're in a relationship, you, you know, you found a rock star if you can truly be vulnerable yeah. with them yeah. and, and be like, I'm sorry. I'm still growing. Yeah. I still struggle with this. And, yeah. and they'd be like, I love that's you what, anyway. Yeah, that's when I you knew know? he was the one. Yeah. I could just like completely, <sighs> I'm sorry. I suck. I'm this. I'm that. <laughs> yeah. I'm I not look perfect. like this. I hate perfect. this. I hate this about me. Yeah. I am not, I can't do this by yep. myself. Yeah. That's how I knew. I yep. think it's helpful to remember too that when you admit your faults, how much the other person respects you. Yeah. And For like sure. how much more you can grow closer together and like what that shows, like the humility of, Okay, she she checked herself. Yes. Or like she it's figured this out. And if you're not dating, because a lot of you listening to this might not be married. So if you're single and you're asking yourself, how do I admit like my wrongs? It's it's really internal. It's yeah. like it's, yep. the self reflection stuff is yeah. key. You yep. don't have to call up your ex and be like, hey, I just want to you know say sorry for the <laughs> yeah, twenty no. things that I realized I did F wrong. Them, move it's on. about internal. <laughs> but like, like, but like, write but, that but, stuff but, down. Yeah, but internally, but like, how it. am I going to do better next time? Yeah, yes. you know, I think that's part of healing. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like that's, that's the first step that. in healing. Yeah. That's the yeah. first step in healing. Like, yeah. you know, okay, scenario: you have this boyfriend, whoever relationship you get cheated on, and oh my god, it was his fault. He cheated. He did this. He did that. He did that. And you come out of it, and then you are ready to heal. You're ready to grow. I think the first thing is you you have acknowledged that there was trauma. Now. It's time to change. What what was your part in that? Because you cannot control that person. You can never control the other person. You can control yourself. So what can you do differently? Was it I allowed him to cheat on me? I allowed him that space. I allowed him this freedom to walk all over me yeah, in that way. Because, because, I mean, I've probably been in such situations where I definitely like kind of like allowed them to act in a way where it's like we were kind of like like I was like the main chick and it was okay for him to have side chicks even though mm. I wanted to be ah, like so I, oh girl toxic, toxic was my middle name Ooh, from so from age 18 to 27 mm. and you can call me toxic cc okay <laughs> but I I was okay with being toxic like I had embraced it that defense mechanism um but um but I think, like, to, like, what we've been saying, like, it wasn't until, like, I got to a point that I wanted to change, started doing the self-reflection, that I really didn't, like, mm-hmm. understand why. Yeah. yeah. You know? Um, for me, going back, and you talked about how you, like, meditated. I was never good at meditation. That's why I brought that up. Like, how the hell do you <laughs> meditate? Yeah, like, I mean, that, I yeah, that worked for me. For me, it was an, it was an outlet. I started working out. Mm-hmm. And, like, just that, like, gave me, like, so much confidence it showed me yeah girl when you look good you feel good and you yeah, start making different but choices not even life. that like oh i can reach goals yeah oh, fuck you, nigga. like mm-hmm. i can do this mm-hmm. like what mm-hmm. the hell i can do mm-hmm. this on my own mm-hmm. like okay i can reach goals oh that was really hard oh but i did it like okay like it, that's so i'm not saying everybody's gonna love working out but just like i just immerse myself in in that world. I mean, it's about finding your your healthy outlet. That was mm-hmm. it was a healthy outlet. It wasn't drugs. It wasn't alcohol. It yeah. wasn't clubbing. Yeah, it was completely healthy. Like I completely dedicated myself to a, a healthy routine, eating. You know, freaking running. I hate running. Ew. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh, <laughs> I can't doing, relate. I was doing crap like that. <laughs> like, but it's just like. Oh, the amount of release in my brain. And then at the back end of it, every night I would write it down. Mm -hmm. I would write it down. And I wrote all that stuff down. What I did wrong, what I allowed, what, you know, how it got there. And then I took that and ripped it all up and then went from that and then wrote the list of what I'm expecting next I believe, of myself and the man. I believe so strongly in writing stuff down. Oh my God, um, I'm so good at it. <laughs> especially when like you get to see later on in life, like you, you, you have yes. a piece of paper that's like dated and you're like, dang, I remember when I was broken and, yes. and depressed. And Girl, I, I brought that out at my wedding, I, y'all. I brought, I brought out 
the list mm-hmm. of what I wanted in my I man. That's right. And it was Rashawn. I, 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 I was check, supposed check, 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 check. to do that and literally left it. Here. Yeah, I was yeah, you so did. Mad you did. Yeah, I, I brought it. Hundred. I brought it. Yeah. Yeah. It was in my vows. It was that like, was hello, thank you, God. Yeah, girl, I used um, to write out my my prayers, and I used to pray for a man like like the one I have now. Yeah. Like yeah. at twenty three, when I was still toxic, CC. I was Ooh. like, I know I deserve better, but not yet. But Lord, just yes. but not, start yeah. start prepping him. I think know? I wrote that a few months before. I met Sean actually yeah same for me and Dre yeah. it's like there's definitely a po- like power in words and in and in, in, in the pen yes like, put that down uh, but, but even I want to still- follow up on what you were just talking about because you were talking about like the the cheating aspect mm-hmm. and kind of like mm-hmm. so moving forward from cheating I think a major thing that comes with healing is that you cannot take your trust issues from your last relationship Ooh, into your new one it's so mm. hard if you <laughs> dated a man and he cheated on you you do not need to get into another relationship relationship until you fully let go of what happened You're and so do right, not put Brie. that on that new man You're so who right. did nothing to you it's it so hard like, that's why you got to put that true. space that's, that's that, that, space. Is, that shit is hard though it's so hard <laughs> but no that Let's space <laughs> but even still like going into my renew my new relationship like it would be like why you got your phone turned over? Yeah. Like oh little God, triggers. Yes. Like yeah, why, so, why, why, why you got your phone? Why is it, why yeah. is it on, not on vibrate? So, like so, it little triggers that I did bring into it. Oh girl, me but too. once you and get nothing's to, wrong with that, but you have to communicate it. Yeah. Like, you do and that's it. what I was just going to say. You got to check yourself. Like, okay, I'm tripping. I'm tripping. Yes. This man did nothing wrong to me. Like, yes, he, he was vulnerable with me and telling me, telling me that he cheated on his past two girlfriends. Yes. But that does not necessarily mean that he's going to cheat on me. Right. I'm his wife now. Yes, yes. They not wives. He, my my husband doesn't have any baby mothers. So we don't, we didn't bring any baggage into our relationship. Hey girl. We started fresh, <laughs> right? So, so it's like, I can't, I can't like, Mm, like punish him for yeah. his past mistakes yeah. because he doesn't do that to me. Yeah. So that's not fair to him. Yeah. So it's like, uh, uh-uh, uh, girl, check yourself. Like this man loves you. Like it's difficult though. Like it's difficult. Yeah, it girl, takes time. I still struggle with that. Um, that and to Bree's <laughs> point, you know, you can't bring that into the next relationship, but it, it, it's easier said than done. But I do think the way to get it done is the communication part of it. Like, mm-hmm. You know, communication is when so he was. T- it was like so. I re- I won't forget the first few weeks. He kept turning his phone over, and you had to remember. Yeah, like, what's that about? Sean had a baby mother. Yeah, so and I don't like, like calling her that. The mo- the mother of because I really love her to death now. Yeah, like the the <laughs> mother of my my stepson. Like it was like yeah, like oh yeah, so much a healing I had to yeah, do yeah, to yeah. be put in that <laughs> spot. Yeah, and for him to be like Angela, been like, like mm. no, like or he would be like yes, that is. <clears throat> you know his mom and she's yeah. telling me he's sick like mm-hmm. and that's okay yeah like, that's tough. You're, and you're okay something as simple as like imagine this right if you go into a relationship there was no trust issues that you're bringing to the table someone turning their phone over could simply mean that they just don't want to see the alerts on exactly the phone. It has yeah and they're to trying to be very with present them with you yeah. negative or right. bad right. or or right. like them triggering you and they have no idea but if you say hey i was previously tre- cheated on these are the things that for me i feel are red flags yep. and the things that trigger me to feel you know insecure or like i'm not the only person in your world like mm-hmm. let's just kind of talk That's about it so that you're aware because i don't want to put that on you but i also don't want you to you know and i think that is so that is so that. they cannot men are the no worst clue. mind readers you want to know why because they can't <laughs> <laughs> okay even like with social media like i immediately had that conversation with sean mm. My ex never posted me on his socials. So I felt like he was hiding me. That's yeah. what I told him immediately. Mm. And that might have not been the case with him, but he noted it. Mm-hmm. I was all over that man's social media. Yeah. Like, I mean, what's, what's not to be all over his social media? <laughs> Plus, see, there's girl. beautiful girls <clears throat> who want to be shouted out on their man's social yeah. media. And they just accept that they're not. Listen. Because they don't communicate you, you it with him. You post me. Yeah. I'm cute. <laughs> Unless there's like a mutual decision between you two, totally, which I know totally, definitely totally. occurs. Absolutely. But for me, it was a trauma. It yeah. was a trauma. And I had gotten to the point where I, I not maybe not necessarily healed from it, but was aware of it mm-hmm. and brought it up when I met Sean. And the moment he asked me to be his girlfriend, he posted that channel. I know that's right. <laughs> I, I know like, hey. that's right. Okay. Do it for the gram. Right. But I mean, and that's so dumb, but it's the age that we live I in, mean, right? Yes, but we're millennials who grew up with social media. Yeah. And, you know, like our 
a big part of our life now is social media. Like, let's not front. Yeah. And like, let's call a spade a spade. It is. <laughs> like, <laughs> and no, it's so stupid though, right? It is stupid. Uh, but, but it is what it, it is. It's it is here. What it is. It's not yeah. going nowhere. Yeah. Ever. No, it's just like, going to get more intense. Yes, more and more. And <laughs> that's what I'm understanding now, you know, from my friends who are single and those who are dating, social media has made it. Yeah. I mean, we, I mean, like to like the point of like your ex, like never posted you. Like, I just have an, I like, the, mm, um, I have had friends who had who have had relationships where like they were like basically a secret and mm-hmm. it's just like yeah that's a red flag to trigger, me trigger trigger yeah. red flag all that trauma I mean, all of that so but the communication part of it talking about it in the beginning like i laid that out yeah you know the 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 phone thing Ooh, I was always going through uh, X's phone. You know, I've never, I have I've never, never s- been through Sean's phone. I mean, I told I've him. I've never scrolled I told him. A phone I'm and gonna I don't know. Want to. Like anything, he, find he's something. hidden like three or things from me. I found them out all. Found out all of them. I didn't even. I had to. I didn't have to go through his phone. Everything that he's hidden from me. I found, and I just. Also, I prayed to God yeah. for that. Like, please, if Thank there's God. anything also, I need to know, show me. My please husband's a really bad liar. <laughs> So I know when that motherfucker's lying. <laughs> like, oh gosh. Like, 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 you're acting different. Me too. Me too. <laughs> you acting different. Like, why are you acting like that? Yeah. He's like, Ugh. So Ugh. I brought that up. I brought up social media and just other things like that communication about what happened to you, you know, your trauma, what you did to deal with it, if you've healed from it completely or not. Um, you know, now, do you guys think bringing it up means you're healed or you're not healed? It could be both, okay. I think. Are you talking about like social media? Like anything. If you bring no, up in your new relationship, hey, this happened to me before. Like my expectation that is that it doesn't happen again. Uh, that, yes, you need to vocalize your expectations 150%. I mean, yeah. Because if you don't, then expectations go unmet and then that causes resentment. I mean, in the beginning, and if he's like, oh, man, you tripping. <laughs> You before you get any kind of more connected to that man, you can be like, okay, I'm gonna trip elsewhere. How about that? Yeah, exactly. Oh, facts. <laughs> I mean, I also yeah, facts. I th- I definitely think that you need to vocalize your expectations, but also you need to like have an understanding of like where y'all's relationship is, right? Mm-hmm. So like, I don't. I think certain expectations aren't realistic. Like yeah. too soon. Yes. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, day oh one, yeah. Don't pull out Please. the diary. <laughs> right. Right. Like these are my traumas. Do you agree? Do you to abide? Do you do any of these? Do you do you uh, pull out the whole these? journal? Like um, your like, prayer book and like, all. Like sis, you are giving crazy cat lady vibes. Like sit it's down. It's almost yes. like okay. So this is a because on in in dating, right? Like it, people always ask, like, when is, you know, when is it too soon to have certain yeah. conversations? And because like Dre and I waited, there was like a moment where girls would be like, you know, and it seems like nobody wants to wait. Like, you know, the very first thing I do is tell him wait for marriage and then they just seem to lose interest. And it's like, baby, let him get to know you first. And so when it comes to like healing and traumas and triggers, like this is not a date one conversation. Yeah. I will say for, for, for Shane and I, um, when we first, like when I became his girlfriend, we had sex every single day for a whole month straight. And then I was like, mm, hold on, let me scale this. this. Let me let me scale this back because I'm actually really feeling this guy. And I think that he's going to be the forever one. So I don't want to treat him how I treated every other man before him. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I'm gonna get very intentional. And like, I kind of like took this out of like Brie and Dre's book. Like they like Brie and Dre were the first ever healthy relationship I had ever seen in my life personally. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know what? I want to be very intentional. I want to stop having sex. I want to see if I actually really like you and if you really like me. Mm-hmm. And so we did. And it was hard. <laughs> to, I was to, gonna say, <laughs> we, we didn't do that. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, was, it was definitely but very hard, but I'm glad that we did yeah. it. Because that tells me that it let me know and him that when we do come across bumps in the road, yeah. we're not just going to like right. up and leave and like go to like instant gratification. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? And you know, part of me kind of, mm, I lied because that sex was amazing. I don't wish <laughs> I did. I'm not taking it back. <laughs> However, it makes me think of after you had that baby and mm-hmm. there was what, no six sex. weeks. No. For I was so worried I, because we had never did that before. Me and Shane stopped having sex when I was like, eight months pregnant and yeah like, we did too i was i was too big but i, I was so <laughs> i was so worried 
And of course, I wasn't everything. worried because we stopped having See, sex. That's what I'm saying. And I was like, oh no, uh, we have right. never mm-hmm. done that before. So yeah, he'll, he'll just touch himself. I might say, okay, ladies, if you're listening, <laughs> try out CC's advice. Now, I'm not taking about take it back the beginning of the relationship six because that joy was oh no girl like yeah okay. every day so many days yeah so many so days. much <laughs> a lot of sex <laughs> sorry babe <laughs> sorry Bree. <laughs> sorry <laughs> I know I'm so sorry I'm one year in so uh, yeah. I, mean, I like, feel no, like, like I can be no, a part no it's okay we have sex now you we're guess, doing this yes work the way yes yes <laughs> yes yes completely so I think the last thing we need to talk about uh on this episode is how we already talked about how to actually identify the trauma, how to admit your faults. Um, and pretty much like, you know, I understanding that it doesn't just come from a relationship that was romantic, but it Mm -hmm. comes from your upbringing families and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about how to take the, the healing, the, the trauma, all of the work that you've put in and how do you now prepare for the next relationship? One, if you're single going into a relationship mm. or two, if you're already in it, like, what do you do now that you are aware you've done the healing? Cause healing doesn't just stop. It doesn't. No, so it's no, like, it's, what, it's what do we do now that we're getting I mean, ready or are in that relationship? I mean, you know, it's kind of like, you've already made your list, right? So like, you know, like your negotiables and your non-negotiables. Mm. So it's like when a fine ass brother pulls up <laughs> in his his Bentley, but he's not giving you the time of day that you want or deserves, honey. He ain't the one. Mm -hmm. Trust me, there's a lot of fine ass brothers rolling around in a nice German whip that you know what I'm saying. Well, German (laughs) will will, will give you the attention that you deserve and you desire, right? You know what I'm saying? So, I, I think it starts with like. You know what you do and you don't want and what you will and you won't tolerate. Yes. It starts with that, right? Yes. So like anything that's not checking those boxes, it's like, this is nice. It's shiny, but no thank you. I'm going to keep on my path until that right one, is. you know, I, I tracked that right one to me. Yeah. I think it's all about accountability, right? Like mm. how do you... How do you know when you're, because this happens a lot, you work on yourself, you're the best version of you, then you get in this relationship and all that self-reflection kind of stops because now you're so busy with this shiny new toy that Mm -hmm. you're excited and, you know, you're being flaunted and your friends are like, oh girl, you're fine. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have all these things happening. How do you make sure that you don't fall back into like not, or fall back into missing red flags? So I feel like having really good and intentional friends, especially Mm -hmm. friends, the friends that you know that. Are in if, if, if you hang around a bunch of hoes, uh, guess what? Yeah, you're probably gonna act like a I'm little hoes. <laughs> um, I was gonna agree with you. Like, if I gave advice to my younger self, I would say, stop focus on falling in love, finding marriage. Focus on building good relationships. Yeah, yeah. Focus on authentic genuine relationships. You know, I wasn't even focused on finding love. I was focused on making money and then my man came to me. Okay, how about mm-hmm. that? I would still, <laughs> hey, y'all, focus on that. That's, uh, that I'm is, hey. to my queen. Right, and that, but that would have been my, because that was what something imprinted on me when I was young. Yeah. That that's what I had to do. I had mm-hmm. to find my Prince Charming and that was like my focus and that would have been my advice to my younger self. Focus on building good relationships and even if because again friends change with the season even if those relationships don't last you you know how to do it you Mm -hmm. have that you have people there then my second piece of advice is to anybody who's single where where are you what like what do you want to be married and if you want to be married do not date somebody when married Mm. Yes. Point why are you wasting your time period. why are you wasting your don't time don't wait do not marry somebody you wouldn't marry I know there's and I'm not gonna get into the potential thing and all of that oh girl potential you, goodbye you, you like, know we too I old feel for like that. you know your, your date you on um, like the fifth date like I could marry him. Don't oh, I waste immediately. your time I was like I didn't even like kids until I met Shane and then when I met Shane I was like you know what I can have his babies. Yeah, you know. I'm going to coin something that my husband always says. Yeah. He says, if your son came out as this man that you're dating, like, would you feel that you were, like, a good parent? Like, would you feel, would you feel happy with this end product? Like, if you are dating a man. That's a good one. That DeAndre. you would not be proud to call your son. With the he's gyms. probably not the person you should be giving Facts. your dang time to. And, I mean, and just, even more than that, is this person, 
can they be a good father to your children? And it's like, yeah. most of the time, heck no. It's a, yeah. no. So it's like, and no. that doesn't just change overnight. So it's like, you know, have have accountability things yes. set up to know when you are going back on your word, when you're going backwards in your healing, because it, it does happen and yeah. it's easy to happen when the world is going around and you're just kind of a part of this cycle. So it's yeah. like, you got to notice when things are happening and, and kind of stop it in its tracks and like get back on Please. and yeah. continue on that growth path but Just, yep. yeah so I important. mean I think a lot of what we talked about on this episode will hit home for a lot of women oh for sure I think we've all dealt with the things that we talked about I think it's now figuring out you know once you've identified it work on it you can still work on it even in a relationship but my personal opinion and suggestion is to heal and do the work before getting into a relationship it doesn't mean you can't be on dates or you can't have, have yeah. friends yeah. or have you to. can't take things yeah, slow yeah. but don't jump into something yes. and throw all your baggage and all your trauma on someone because they're going to hit the yeah. hit the door running so yeah. 100%. it takes and it's really hard to work on yourself while you're in a relationship with it somebody. is it's hard you need to be alone and be isolated be the priority Just, yes yeah. it's important like please don't I personally think I know women do it but I personally think you shouldn't jump from relationship to relationship hell no I, that's just my opinion no girl and you, it, you need some time to heal but you, that like, like you need to reflect you need yeah. to reflect and that and like to Bree's point that's so important do the healing do that and if you did that and you're ready for the next step please don't waste your time with someone it just takes you off the market you know what helped me in the past <laughs> i've literally looked up the population of the world like in terms of men brie that sounds and like, was you like would do. no for real because sometimes you gotta <laughs> remind yourself you're trying to get people what so that's no, what brie would listen, do brie, i'm gonna let you finish but <laughs> <Listen. laughs> we get so caught up in that one man oh. and like not being able to oh, see like how like there's plenty of fish relationship in the sea. and sometimes like i literally had to look up and i'm like look at how many goddamn people there are in this world Why and i know it doesn't seem like on it this one human body but and, and so even, even in like your town, because I hear a lot of girls saying, oh, like, oh, my forever man isn't in D.C. I used to say that all the time. But yeah. that, that was because I was only in my my little circle in D.C. Mm -hmm. I was only in the clubs in D.C. And, and that around. goes to the point of building genuine friendship. Yes. You never. Yeah. Because yeah. like my man was it's funny because me and Shane have been in the same spots before I'm sure of it yep, yep. and just never yep. cross paths yep. never uh, sounds like me and Sean like, we do all the same people yeah it we was know so the same weird people but like like Shane is definitely a wild boy too right so like before me he, that he was a wild boy Dr. let me Costin. tell you <laughs> Shane Dr. Can party. Costin. <laughs> hard play hard. hard um so so it's like we were definitely like in like the same scenes just never cross paths yeah I know so and the thing is I've had friends who've moved to like um, there was like the best place to get in a relationship, the best cities to yeah. find a husband, find a man. And I had friends who moved out there and like, did you not that? find a husband, yeah, did not girl. find a boyfriend, did not you find wanna, nothing. You want to know why? Because they were so fucked up and they didn't do what they needed to do to be able to put themselves in a place to receive a husband. To or attract. To attract they, a husband. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so it was like, girl, it is, if you moving from city to city, but you still carrying the same old tired luggage, like, honey, it might girl. be a time to throw away that luggage, get you a brand new shiny one. And you know what I'm saying? Just clean it the up a bit. The brand new shiny one. <laughs> like, yes. No, it's, I mean, honestly, like, I they're like Bree said. What's the number? How many men? Oh, it's a lot. Oh, there's it was there's a long no time statistics, ago. but there's it's a long time ago <laughs> that I looked that up. But I was like, wow, it's a lot of people. <laughs> it's a lot, and I and I get it. It doesn't seem like it. And from my and I and I know people are like, oh my god, they're married, but they don't know what the dating scene is like now. And I, I understand that it, it sounds difficult. There's a lot There's a lot of variables oh, no, out the, there. The I streets get that. are savage right now, y'all. I get that. Listen, I, still, I, I, no, I, I don't get it, but I'm we, like, whoa. We have um, a lot of single girlfriends and single male friends. And from what I hear... It's insane. Wild, so I get wild, that. Wild. But, guys, but, there's nothing like you being healed and you being good with yourself. Yeah, for sure. And you finding someone who's on that same path. Oh, for sure. And the best way to keep You never know. Happening. Grocery store, blind date. How'd you meet Dre? Blind date. Friend. Friend. Yeah, Shane. Friend. How, how, you never so know. So technically, Shane slid into my Slid DMs. into the DM, y'all. But, but respectfully, <laughs> he, was, he was at the time, I was like in like the financial, financial advisor realm and mm -hmm. like, you know, 
talking about investments and money and hanging yeah. around cute girls who was also talking about getting to the money. So he yeah. was like, I want to be in this room. So like, that's how we, we like connected. Yeah. But you yeah. know, as soon as we got in each other's space, it was like, okay. I okay. have, I, I have friends who met on Tinder. Like, and I know Tinder is wild. It is wild. But guys, there's nothing like you being here, not necessarily healed, but you being good with you. And then you run into the person who is ready for you. Yeah. That is God. Like, that, that it just is what it is. And you could be in San Fran. You can be in New York. You can be in London. You can be in Bumfuck. I don't know. <laughs> but you never know where the person is. But how about you stop worrying about that person and worry about you? Yeah. Yeah. I think the key to, to healing is understanding that, you know, not every person in your life is a forever person. It's a seasonal person. There's a reason for that person. Yeah. Friends you know, too. Relationships. Friends, yes. friends yes. too. Yes. Remember, be how do I learn yeah. from this? Like, yeah. so it always helped me to move on from like exes and like to be encouraged and excited to heal when I ask myself, okay, why did God put this person in my life? What was I supposed to learn from it? Forget what he did to me. And that helped me with um, closure and like knowing that I don't need to have a conversation. I don't need to yell at you up and down or tell you yeah. I'm better than this. No. Or, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like, yeah. what do I learn from Wasted this and how do energy. I go into my next relationship? Yeah. And what I always like to say is if it's not the right man, you're just one man closer to the right man. So it's like, get right. him out of here. Yeah. Get, get him out of here Listen. and let's keep going on this journey because he's Girl, out there. He's but out you gotta, there. You gotta, he's out there. Cut him off. Make I'm telling you, but and let's go. again, know what you're looking for. Yes. If something shiny comes along, sis, don't, don't, but don't how take do you know the... what you're looking for until you're healed? Because a lot of these yeah. diamonds are fake. Step one, so... step two, step three. <laughs> so just, yes. This was a good chat. Ah! Maybe this is, this is our first episode. How do y'all feel? I feel great. I mean, Can it's I just like wine? when we're <laughs> on the couch with our wine. But except I love the blankets. We're just fancy right Angela, now. Angela, are you going to drink your cheers. wine? Yes. Let's do a cheers do to end oh, our girl, first you don't episode. want it, pass it this way. <laughs> Two for the girls. <laughs> Look at my cup of Angela. <laughs> cheers. Oh, right, I haven't sipped anything. <laughs> we all See, I'm we'll the one who's going to, it's going to dribble down my whole face. Mm -mm. So I'm going to do it really slow. You got it. Girl, keep it cute. Slow and steady. Keep there it you cute. go. Okay. All all right. Right. Oh, that's not bad, Bree. It's great. Mm. Bree always talks about me because I like the, uh, the fruity wine. Juice. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes. Juice. You think Moscato? Is oh, juice. I love. Ooh, that I do not. Girl, it's gross. That it's eleven dollar one in Giants. No, thank you. On the you. bottom row, uh, ma'am. I'm going to pass. And then Hard sometimes pass. it's it's like at the sale. Girl, I don't want to sound too bougie, but I need me the top shelf Pinot Grigio. I get ha I get hangovers really easy. Yeah, me too. So me too. I need like drink quality that juice, <laughs> aka Moscato. Sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We'll uh, we'll we'll class it up a bit. <laughs> thank you. We're, thank we're, you. We're I mean, I've tried, but it's like them choice be like, my palate's not ready yet. My palate. Girl, we we will refine your palate. <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. <laughs> we um, want to make sure you guys stay connected with us. So make sure to follow us at Relationship Restored. You'll see all three of us in our pages. You can get us from there. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you guys subscribe, comment. Let us know if you have any questions. Help us come up with upcoming topics. We want to talk about things that you find most important. We hope you enjoyed this first episode. And come we will back. catch you round two. <laughs>